All right, welcome back to I think what is part 10. You'll see in the title if I'm wrong or not, but I think we're on part 10 now with the Angular Tour of Heroes tutorial. And today we're going to talk about observables, why we even care to use those, and what we plan on doing in the future that's going to use observables. And if you're wanting to learn Angular and you're just now starting this, this series and this is your first video, I do recommend going back to the very beginning. I do have a playlist created of all of these videos in a row so you can follow along and learn Angular that way. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe and let's go ahead and grab a cup of coffee too. That's what I just did. And let's go ahead and check out what we're going to be doing today, why we care to do that. Actually, let me bring up VS Code and start serving up our application just to get ourselves ready. So yeah, we'll CD to Tor of Heroes and then we'll do ng serve dash dash open as always to open it up in our web browser for us once it gets compiled. While it's compiling, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to continue where we left off with the hero service where we use that to grab the data for us and injected it into our heroes class or our heroes component rather. And today we're going to set it up a little bit farther to the point where if we wanted to use an API and make an HTTP request to get that data, it's already set up for us. And to do that, we're going to use observables. The thing about API requests is it's not all synchronous, right? Whenever I request something, it's not guaranteed that's gonna come back right away. It is indeed asynchronous. I have to call that server with a request saying, give me this data and I have to wait on it. I don't control that server at this point, it's just a waiting game. And because of the nature of that, that's where observables come into play. And observables let us pretty much just that, observe and wait for data. And we can have different things subscribe to that observable and listen for a response from our server. And that's basically exactly what we're, what we're gonna do here. So it does look like in part six, we are getting data from a server, so that'll be exciting. I think that'll be really useful for you that are actually gonna use Angular in the real world and we're going to use observables that way, but we're just setting it up, like I said now, just so it's ready and we get a feel for how to construct that. And later we'll be using the RxJS and actually we'll be using it now, which is the library in Angular that we use to make HTTP requests and we use the HTTP client to make those requests for us, whether they are get requests, post requests, whatever. So it looks like it's served up and where we left off, we, uh, just changed grabbing all of the heroes to a service. So what I'm going to do is go back to the hero service class and we're going to change up the get heroes method. So it's not going to return just a hero array. It's going to return an observable of a hero array. So we'll do observable. And then in the angle brackets, we're going to put hero array is what the observable is going to hold. And it should be capital O, I believe. And let's hover over it and we'll bring this in from the RxJS module. And actually we're gonna import something else. So above I'm going to say observable and of is what we're importing from RxJS. And instead of just returning heroes, we wanna return a single object or a single value of the hero array. Because in reality, when we call the API, that's what's going to be our response. It's gonna be a, a single emitted value. And to do that, that's where that of comes into place. We're going to take a hero array and turn it into a single value on its own. So let's make a value const heroes and set it equal to of and then the heroes array. This one right here. So now instead of just a basic heroes array, a bunch of different heroes values, it's a single value heroes array. And then we're going to return heroes. So when we do the API call in the future, what we'll actually end up doing is we'll inject the HTTP client in the constructor, and then we'll do something like uh, heroes will be equal to, or maybe even return HTTP client dot get, and then our URL and all that good stuff. But for now, we're going to continue to use the mock heroes, and that's why we have to use this of to make it kind of simulated as if we are getting it from an API. It returns the same kind of values that an API would return. Okay, so now that I saved, you can see that type observable is missing the following properties from type hero. And our heroes component is now failing to build 
And this is because now that it's returning an observable, we have to subscribe when we want to receive the values because when we call an API, we want to subscribe or listen in for those values to come in and then do something with those values. So here we're going to kind of start out the same way, this.heroservice.getHeroes. And you can continue to write this all in one line, but maybe it's best practice to continue on the next line and then do dot subscribe, meaning we're gonna to subscribe to this and then do something with the data, like I said, as it comes in. And this is where you could do a Lambda expression. I use X, but you can use whatever, you know, kind of alias you wanna use in the tutorial. They use heroes and then they say this.heroes is equal to heroes. I think that becomes a little jumbled. Um, so I'm just going to use X so it's easier to differentiate. And then whatever we bring in, x, this dot heroes. So this value right here is gonna be set equal to x, the value that comes in when we subscribe. And if we wanted to do a bunch of different things when the values come in, we can do it in a way like this. So we're gonna have open and closed curly braces. And then we can do something like console dot log. So we can log what is the value of x that it comes into. And then also, then we can do the this.heroes is equal to x. And you can do multiple things um, when that value comes in. So I did a little bit differently than the tutorial. They don't do this part, but I think, you know, it might be good practice to debug and make sure that what you get in is what you expect. So now you can see it compiled successfully after I saved, and let's bring this back up, okay? And it looks like everything's good because we have all of our heroes here. And if I hit F12, Here's that array that came in. And if we expand it, we can see all of the different, or all the different objects in that array that came in when we subscribe to that method. And everything looks good. And as you expect, when I click on it, the details pop up for it. So in the end, what did we accomplish? We accomplished getting this ready to make API requests in the future to get our data. And this is a big step. Once you get this down, um, it should be pretty downhill once, I mean, you just have to get the URL, what kind of request you're making, and that's it. In our case, it's it's gonna be a get request because we're gonna get some kind of data and then display it the same way we have been doing before. So that's it for this video. In the next video, it looks like we're going to generate another component called messages, and then it looks like at the bottom of our application, whenever we do something, we want to display a message to the user that everything went as planned or maybe there's some kind of error so stay tuned for that um should be fun and hopefully you guys are really benefiting from these videos i really enjoy making this so far and thanks for watching hope to see you in the next one